Good morning, Mr. Chief Justice, Justices. Uh, may it please the court. Uh, present with me this morning is Ronald Fry uh, and Eric Dunbar, who were co-counsel in this matter as well. Mr. Potash, good morning. There were three issues that were raised a moment ago, uh, and, and I would like to address those before I kind of get on with my uh, presentation as I had outlined. Uh, I don't believe that this court need concern itself with uh, whether or not a lawyer uh, can pursue a second career. I think that uh, Mr. Dadisman made some very clear choices in a pattern of neglect and misconduct. Uh, that concern of his second profession, I believe, uh, should be his concern now. Uh, the issue of restitution was also raised and whether or not uh, the victims were made whole in this case. Uh, the respondent uh, has focused much of its argument this morning on the, uh, the Watkins matter, which was the uh, matter for which Mr. Dadisman served eight months in prison. It's important to note, and I think that we would be doing an injustice to the other clients of Mr. Dasman, there are several other matters in this case. There were several other victims uh, that were the subject of the disciplinary process that were not made whole. Mr. Watkins was, by the victim's uh, fund assistance, the other victims in this case to date have not been uh, reimbursed, uh, not only in total but even in part. Uh, and I think that in focusing only on the Watkins matter, I think that uh, that would be unfair. Uh, as a client going to a lawyer, the uh, matters for which they go to the lawyer are always important to them. Uh, it is everything to them. And in this uh, matter, we know that people went to uh, Mr. Dadisman with wrongful death cases. They went with class action lawsuits. Uh, they went with uh, financial matters all of which were of the utmost importance to those particular clients and victims in those cases, and I don't think can be treated uh, any uh, more lightly than the Watkins matter, only because Mr. Dadisman was caught and had to serve prison in that matter. That being said, the respondent uh, utilizes a quote uh, from State of Ohio versus O'Neill, uh, specifically the dissent in that matter, uh, in which it was stated that not every murder warrants death uh, in essence, one must look to the aggravating circumstances to determine which individual deserves the uh, most severe penalty. Uh, and in this case, on behalf of Relator, I do submit that uh, the instant matter could not be more serious. Uh, there can be no more appropriate sanction or no other appropriate sanction other than permanent disbarment. And I base that on the, on the following. We have eight victims in this case. We have seven particular instances of misconduct. All have several uh, different violations of the Code of Professional Responsibility. Uh, there were in total 32 infractions that were found by the panel and adopted by the board uh, for this court's consideration. There were three instances of, uh, or three findings of lack of cooperation throughout the uh, disciplinary uh, investigation and process. So I believe that that uh, is a, this is a very clear case for permanent disbarment. Now, in support of respondents' claim that an indefinite suspension uh, should be uh, the order here, uh, there were two cases that were primarily relied upon, uh, the first being uh, Cleveland Bar Association versus Glassman and the second, Disciplinary Council versus Columbro. Uh, the Columbro case was uh, cited to a moment ago. First, I would address the Cleveland Bar Association versus Glassman case and will state um, that it is completely factually uh, distinguishable than the matter at hand. Uh, in that case, there was, uh, it was one matter with two separate convictions. Uh, interestingly, two of the panel members in the instant case also sat on the uh, Glassman matter and began to uh, point out the distinctions at the hearing uh, of the Dadisman case that can be found beginning in the transcript of page 587 and continuing on to page 588. But as I review those cases, I find that uh, there are, uh, in my estimation, 12 points of distinction and I think uh, should, uh, therefore, it's not pertinent uh, to the matter at hand. Uh, in that case, in the Glassman case, there was a 10-year delay in prosecution, and that was just kind of due to the fact that the case um, 
could be characterized as falling between the cracks in the disciplinary process. There was a stipulation of facts. Uh, there was one matter with two violations. There was a stipulation of aggravated and mitigating circumstances. Uh, in that case, the respondent took responsibility for his actions, provided a justification, although it may have been somewhat misplaced, uh, for his actions. Uh, an apology was given to all parties uh, that had been uh, harmed in the case, and restitution was made to all parties uh, in, a, in its entirety. There was cooperation during the disciplinary proceeding. Character references were presented. And there was uh, the situations in the respondent's life that he felt may have uh, contributed to his actions uh, were also provided, and that was the death of his father and the dissolution of his marriage. Finally, all criminal sanctions in that case had been uh, completed at the time, so he had been able to um, show that he responded favorably to uh, the sanctions imposed by the criminal courts and the criminal Yeah, but all of that is different from this. It's 100 percent entirely different. Restitution hasn't been made to all the victims in this case, and he doesn't even know why he wants to be a lawyer, and he hasn't cooperated with the proceeding, and he hasn't even admitted in the Rose and the Baylog and, and some other cases. That's correct, Your Honor. Uh, and that also uh, can be the distinction found uh, between this case and the Columbro matter. Uh, in the Columbro matter, very briefly, uh, the respondent in that case did show remorse, uh, did acknowledge a problem, accepted that problem, and took, a step, and took steps to address that problem, which we know is uh, drug addiction. So by the time that the matter had uh, reached this court, there was also uh, there were uh, some favorable and mitigating uh, factors to be considered. Now, in the respondent's brief, uh, there were some other statements that I respectfully would disagree with. Uh, one in particular, I find to be, uh, for lack of a better term, somewhat misleading, uh, and, and that is that Michael Dadisman has admitted to having committed the most serious infraction. Uh, that is true that he did uh, admit to the most serious infraction. Again, what's most serious? I don't think that Ms. Harantz or Mr. Rose or Mr. Seaman would contend that Mr. Watkins' case was any more important to him than theirs were to them. Uh, but with 